On this DVD, we shall learn about the basics of chess endgames. What is a chess endgame? Endgames are positions when there are few pieces left on the board. Most of them are already exchanged. In order to win a chess game, you need to know how to checkmate. Or on the other side, how to avoid it. Usually, when one side has a rook versus just a single pawn, it's a simple win. A rook is worth five points after all, while a pawn only one. However, if that pawn is quite advanced, especially with the help of the king, it can be dangerous to save the game. Its goal is to promote with the help of the king, and when the rook captures the pawn, the king would capture the rook. So therefore, white needs to be careful and needs to bring the king to hell, because together the rook and the king can stop the pawn and the king. And once the pawn is stopped, the king and the rook can attack the pawn and capture it. That's what we'll see in this example. White brings the king, black advances the pawn, white brings the king, king comes to help, king c4, pawn advances, king c3, king e2. Now black is threatening to promote the pawn, however it's white's turn, and white will play king c2, attacking the promotion square a second time, and now if black still promotes the pawn, the white rook will simply capture the queen. Also, if black does not promote the pawn, for example, the king moves to e3, hanging on to that pawn on d2. White would play rook d1, attacking the pawn a second time and capturing it next move. Here the obvious move, catching the pawn by playing king f6, would be a big mistake. Because white would advance the pawn, give it up. However, when black captures the pawn, it's stalemate. The game is a draw. This is another proof how accuracy is very important in the endgame. There is no second chance. The correct move here is to give a check with the rook. Now, after king h7, to play king f6, g7, king f7, and now again the promotion square is attacked enough times, and let's say after king h6, Black could just play rook g8 and win the pawn. This is another very important position to remember. Not just the position, but the idea itself. When one side has two connected pass pawns, meaning two pawns next to each other, versus a rook, and the kings are far away, not playing much role in the position, two pawns are stronger on the sixth rank, just two ranks away from promotion than a rook. Even though it's black's turn in this position, black cannot save the game. You can try to figure it out on a chessboard, but no matter what, the two pawns will win. One of them will promote, and black can only capture it so that the other pawn will recapture and a new queen will be born. For example, black can delay the end by giving a few checks but not save the game. That would only help white by chasing the king, helping the pawns. But even without black giving all these checks, for example, black would try to attack one of the pawns. White could simply push the other pawn, and then either the rook would capture the pawn when the f-pawn promotes, and queen versus rook is a win, as we shall see later, or if after f7, now black is running after the other pawn, trying to catch it, white would push the e pawn now, and again, one of the two pawns will promote. Rook versus bishop is usually a draw. A random position that you see right now on the board is a relatively simple draw. All you have to watch out for, not to lose your bishop. 
there is no way to force the black king to the corner where it could possibly get in danger. In this position, even though the black king is cornered, white can still not win. For example, after the check on h8 with the rook, the black bishop can block the check and white cannot make progress because, for example, after a wading move, it's stalemate. Or after another rook move, the bishop just moves away again. And when check comes, the bishop comes back to block the check. So it's still a draw. On the other hand, if black has the light-colored bishop in this position, now white is winning because white would play king b6 and either if the bishop moves white simply checks and now bishop blocks rook can just capture the bishop checkmate or if the king moves next to the bishop now after pinning the bishop the bishop cannot move and black only has one move it's not stalemate the king does have a move king moves to the corner and now rook takes bishop checkmate this is quite an amazing position where white has a rook versus bishop, which normally should be a draw, but white can make a centralizing, quiet move, and amazingly, black gets into Zugzwang. White plays rook d4. What does Zugzwang mean? It means that the black bishop, even though it has a lot of squares to go to, has no safe one. And can you believe that this is the winning move, a quiet move like this? Quite amazing. Look at the position, obviously, the bishop cannot move to any of these squares because it will be just hit on any of those squares. However, it cannot even move to any of the other squares because if bishop c8, there will be a fork by rook d8. If the bishop moves to g2, there is a check with rook g4. Or if the bishop moves to f1, and this is the beautiful part. White plays king g6. Threatening checkmate all of a sudden on d8. And the only way trying to escape that is by running out with the king. But that would be stepping into another fork of rook f4 check. Neither helps black trying to run with the king. If the king runs to f8, white checkmates with rook d8. Or if the king runs to the h-file, the rook forks on h4. The surprising part about this rook move is that it has no threat. The threat is, black's problem is, that black has to make a move and has to worsen his position. If black could just pick up the bishop and put it back to the same square, Black would not lose. Black's problem is that either the king or the bishop has to move to a worse place than when they are right now. That's called Zugzwang, a beautiful example. Rook versus knight usually is also a draw. Black can only get in danger if the king is forced to the edge of the board or the king and the knight are separated on the totally other side of the board and the knight could be trapped. Those are the two things black needs to watch out for. In the position we see on the board, even though black's king is on the edge of the board, black is still safe. Here black should play either knight d8 check or knight g5 check. Either one is a draw. However, I would recommend to keep the knight close by the king. Now, after king d6, just give another check. Repeating moves, of course, helps black. That's repetition of moves, draw. So white needs to try to look for some other idea. Let's say king back to d5, and now black can just go back and forth, and black is safe. Of course, if black gets the opportunity, black should try to get out from the edge of the board. But for now, the rook is cutting the seventh rank, so the king cannot. However, if the rook would, let's say, move away, we are more than happy to get towards the center with the king. In this example, black is kind of cornered, and that's the problem. Interestingly, the winning move is a wading move, such as rook g2 or g3 
or even g4. Just like the other example we saw, rook versus bishop, again, black is in Zugzwang. That's what happens. If the king moves this way, obviously the knight just falls. If the king moves to the corner, king moves to f7. And now white is threatening to checkmate, and the knight can only move to an attacked square. How about the knight checking? Doesn't that help? Well, not quite. After knight check, white plays king f6, discover check, king needs to move out, and then king f7. And now the black knight either goes away, and then white just checkmates from this side, or the knight moves to h7 when the rook comes down and checkmates from g8. We're back to rook against pawn. Oh no, just kidding. It's just a typical example that happens quite often actually. That in this position, if black promotes the pawn to a queen, they get checkmated right away by let's say rook c1. That's why in this position, commonly black would promote the pawn to a knight. That almost gives drawing chances. However, because the knight is cornered, after king f3, the knight will be lost right away and still does not save the game because either after knight g3, king just takes, knight f2, rook just takes, and the only other move would be king to f1 that would allow rook c1 checkmate. This is one of the most important positions from the defensive perspective. Black is ahead, black has an extra pawn. And here is how white should save the game. Bringing the rook back to h3, cutting black's king off from the third rank. Now, if black wants to make progress, black would want to push the pawn ahead. Now, black's threat is to come with the king and then try to checkmate. That's why after the pawn advances to d3, white now should move right back to the 8th rank to be ready after king c3 to start checking from behind. Check and check and now white can choose to keep checking or just attack the pawn from the side or behind. That's how white saves the game. Similarly to the last position, now with opposite colors, black would here play rook to the 6th rank waiting until White pushes the pawn to f6 and then right away run back. And now after king g6, start checking from behind and making a draw. This is one of the most important rook endgames to know from the attacking point of view, if you want to win. Well, what's the goal here? to promote the pawn, right? It's already on the seventh rank, just one rank away from promotion. The problem, however, is that the white king is right in front of the pawn. So therefore, the pawn cannot promote for now. What would happen if white just gets the king out of there, clears the way for the pawn? Well, black would start giving checks from the side and keep checking and keep checking a lot of checks. And if the king would go towards the rook, so the checks stop, then the rook would get behind the pawn and the pawn would get lost. That's why white needs to do something trickier than that. White should start first by chasing black's king away, by checking with the rook. Now, if the king goes to f6, that would allow king f8 clearing the pass for the pawn because white doesn't have to worry about this check because the pawn would block the check by promoting itself. Therefore, the king would go to h7 and now white has various ways to win. The simplest one here actually is to step behind the pawn and then for example, after a check, just get out and promote the pawn. Or, even after king g7, king d7, and now, because 
the rook is behind the pawn, neither does king f7 stop the pawn promotion because the rook is protecting the pawn, nor does the checks help because the rook is unable to come behind the pawn because white's rook is on e1. However, I also want to show you another method that's called building a bridge. And here is how that works. White could also play rook g4, and let's say black is waiting. Now, white king gets out, clearing the path of the pawn. Black starts checking from behind. King e6, black starts checking. King f6, rook f1 check. King e5. And after rook e1, now here is the bridge. The rook is blocking the check and then the pawn promotes. If in this position it's black's turn, the game is a draw because black can give checks from the side and white has no escape from them unless the king separates itself from the pawn and then as we said earlier, the rook would get behind the pawn and it's a draw. Mm -hmm.